Hi everyone, this is the fourth video in the Statistics Refresher uh, set of videos. This video is going to cover information on correlation and chi-squares as inferential statistics for independent study. So correlation, the purpose here is to examine the relationship between two continuous variables. Correlation coefficients have a strength and are presented in strength and direction, where strength refers to the absolute value. Um, if a correlation coefficient can range from a negative one to a positive one. So the closer the number is to the absolute value of one, that's going to be a strong relationship, and the closer the value is to zero, that's going to indicate no relationship or a very weak relationship. Direction refers to the direction of the relationship, so that positive or the negative. If you have a positive sign, that indicates a positive relationship, where you would describe it as x increases, y also increases. A negative relationship would be related to as x increases, y decreases. Now an important thing to note here is that sometimes a something that might seem like a positive relationship might be negative simply because of the way the variable is scored. For instance, if I were to t look at the relationship between hours of training and sprint performance, I might think of that as a positive relationship. As you um, as you spend more hours training, your performance in sprints should get better. However, if we score sprint performance as time, a better sprint performance is a shorter amount of time. So as you spend more hours training, your sprint times will decrease. That would indicate a negative relationship. So students should just keep in mind the how the scoring of their variables occurs to understand whether a positive relationship or a negative relationship is occurring. The example we're going to look at here, the researcher wishes to determine whether moral disengagement was associated with the number of aggressive behaviors results in yellow card or red cards received by college male soccer players, where the substantive hypothesis found at the end of the journal article introduction as one, one's level of moral disengagement as measured by the MDSSS increases, the number of yellow cards and red cards received over the season will also increase. Notice how in this I fully describe the I would describe the nature of the relationship as one increases the also in, the other also increases. The null hypothesis: no linear relationship is expected between scores or no significant linear relationship is expected between scores on the MDSSSS and the number of yellow and red cards. Um, it's important here that they indicate linear relationship because correlation cannot handle nonlinear relationships such as curvilinear relationships. So this is what their output would look like if they were to do a correlation. What you're going to see here is you see a symmetric matrix where everything is identical if you cut it down the halfway. Now a variable when correlated with itself is always going to be a perfect 1.0. So that's why you see these ones here. The MDSS correlated with the yellow cards. This Pearson is your R value. So this is what students are going to e say that r equals 0.897. This 0 0.00 underneath it is your sig value or your p value. It's less than 0 0.05, so we're going to say it's significant. And that n is the number of participants. So here, since I had a significant relationship, it was positive, and the number was 0 0.897, so it was quite strong. Um, we, in the findings, which you would put in the results section, you would say, as scores on the moral disengagement in sports scale increases, indicating higher levels of moral disengagement, the number of yellow and red cards also significantly increased. P is less than 0.05 in male soccer players. The conclusion, which you would report in the discussion section, would say something along the lines of, as moral disengagement increases, number of yellow, yellow and red cards received is also expected to increase among male college soccer players. A few notes about correlation. Correlation only looks at relationships, so it can never imply cause and effect. Moral disengagement doesn't cause an increase in red cards or yellow cards. An increase in yellow cards and red cards doesn't cause increased moral disengagement. And there could be some other factor that could be at play here that we're not measuring. So there's never going to be a cause and effect. Um, if you're using correlation. If both variables are interval or ratio, then you're going to use the Pearson product moment, moment correlation coefficient, or R. However, if one or both of the variables is ordinal, then you want to use the Spearman rank order row. 
These are collected both in the same way in SPSS. It's really easy to find them. Spearman rank order row is notated by R with a subscript S next to it. They're both, you read the tables the same way, they look the same way, they're interpreted as positive and negative relationships the same way. Um, so not too much to worry about with that. Um, just something to keep in mind. Graphically, the best presentation for a correlation would be a scatter plot, where the values start at 0, 0, and you can get a nice visual here of this positive relationship, whereas one value increased, the other value also increased. Um, so you get a nice little visual that you can also do APA formatted correlation tables. Now to move on to chi-square. Chi-square here, the purpose is to examine the differences in relationships in categorical variables. There's two different types of chi-square, a one-way chi-square, which compares the observed frequency of a variable to its expected frequency, or a two-way chi-square, which compares the frequency of two different variables across all levels. You're going to see students primarily do two-way chi-squares, so that's what I'm presenting here. The example that I'm using is the researcher examined whether taking driver's education classes was associated with involvement in vehicular accidents in the first six months of driving in high school students where high school students who took driver's ed are more likely to report not being involved in a vehicular accident, while students who did not take driver's ed are more likely to report that they were involved in an accident during the first six months. That's the substantive hypothesis. You find that at the end of the introduction of your journal manuscript. The statistical hypothesis, which the students would put in Appendix A, has no relationship is expected between enrollment in a driver's education class and involvement in vehicular accidents amongst high school students during the first six months. So then they go and they run the SPSS and you can see up here we have the counts, so how many students who took um, driver's ed, four took it, ten, or, or no, how many, these, all these students took it, of those who did, four of them who took it were in accidents, 10 who took driver's ed were not in accidents. Of those who did not take driver's ed, 11 were in an accident, 5 were not. Because you see this switch where we had few and we had lots, and we had lots and few, that's what's going to lend itself to having a significant correlation. When students look, what they want to be looking at is this first Pearson chi-square. The chi-square value, which is written as the Greek letter chi with a square, is 4.821, where the p-value, or the, the their uh, um, p-value is 0.028, so p here is less than 0.05, suggesting that we do have significant differences, and we'd use that information, our results in discussion, where our findings that you find in the results section, individuals who did not participate in driver's ed course were significantly more likely to report being involved in a vehicular accident than those who did participate in driver's ed class, and the conclusion, high school students who participate in driver's education classes are less likely to be involved in car accidents than those who did not take, or who, who did not take driver's ed. The common presentation, again, is a chi-square, often presented in frequencies, so you can see that these are, oh, excuse me, those are presentation, or, um, excuse, those are uh, percentages and what percentage of the sample um, took driver's ed is in the darker gray um, and was in an accident, took driver's ed and was not in an accident, did not take driver's ed and was in an accident, did not take driver's ed and wasn't. Students could also present an APA table. I'm showing all these graphs because I think they look better on the, on the posters and are a better visual uh, as students prepare for their poster presentation. Just a final note at the end, uh, Michelle Moosbergers has a, er, curates an excellent 692 Moodle classroom that, with a lot of information for your students in statistics and analysis as they present or prepare to do their poster and their presentation. So I encourage them to check that out and encourage you to check that out as well. Um, other faculty, she will enroll other faculty for them to have access to it. My teaching fellow, currently it's Nan Zhang. In the future, it might be somebody else. Um, my teaching fellow and I are also available to work with your students on running and interpreting their SPSS, so you can have them stop by our office or set up an email and set up a time to meet with us. And then the videos of these slides are going to be available on my YouTube channel as you're looking at them now. Thank you. Have a good one.